birthday this year, and for more than half of its time as a state, it has had a connection to the movies. That connection is being celebrated this month with a series of films being shown around the state. It's called Maine in the Movies, and it features 35 films that have a tie to this state. Some of the films are classics, some you've never heard of. What the organizers of Maine in the Movies have done is found something for every taste. We have horror, we have family classics, uh, films that I grew up watching like Casper and Andre and Bambi that I'm excited to see on the screen for the first time, on the big screen, the way it should be seen. Um, but we also have a lot of classic films like How to Marry a Millionaire, Peyton Place, that a lot of people feel connected to. And it's a great way to you know, show people these stories again in a new light in celebration of Maine's Bicentennial. Many filmmakers have been drawn to Maine for an obvious reason, its natural beauty. These scenes from the 1957 movie Peyton Place, which was shot in the Midcoast, show that some things never change. There's a timeless appeal to sitting by the ocean on a pretty day and eating lobster. The exciting thing about Maine is there isn't one Maine landscape. There's the coast, there's the mountains, there's the northern part of the state where I'm from, which, you know, all offer completely different vistas and experiences. And I think that's why you see so many different types of films being set in Maine, and that's really reflected throughout the entire program. The movies sort of fall into one of two categories, and correct me if I'm wrong, those that were actually shot in Maine and those that have another kind of connection. What are those other kinds of connections? What do they tend to be? Well, Maine is a state of imagination. You know, people from away have their own ideas about what Maine is, and I think that's really reflected through the variety of films that we have in the lineup. Um, whether it's a fantastical kind of story, like The Iron Giant, which is actually based on a British novel, but the filmmakers thought that, well, we need to set this story somewhere that a robot could hide. And so they found the Mid-Coast in, in their research and they set the story on the Mid-Coast, which is a really intriguing connection that we discovered in putting this festival like together. Can you do that? Blah, blah, blah. Well, you get the idea anyway. One theme that runs through the story of Maine in the movies is that there are an awful lot of films where the story is set in Maine, but then the movie makers shot it elsewhere. Come on, Andre. Andre is a perfect example of Come that. On. It's set in Rockport, Maine, but it was actually on, partially Andre. shot in Mississippi. Oh. But that's the magic of the movies. You don't really know unless Come you on. do the research into it. There are some movies where people are going to say, oh yeah, I recognize that. For instance, Carousel was shot around Booth Bay Harbor in the 1950s, and there are going to be a lot of scenes in that movie that people are going to recognize. There are going to be other movies where people are going to be saying, oh, I had no idea that that was actually shot in Maine. And that's kind of what you're looking for, I, I assume, is you sort of want to have a little bit of that, oh, I didn't know that moment. Right, absolutely. I, th I think of a couple of titles like Belfast, Maine by the documentarian Fred Wiseman and Empire Falls, which was shot here, and a lot of people were extras and know people who were featured in the film in some way. And it's really interesting to see how those main communities that were depicted in films of 20, 30 years ago, how those communities have changed since, and that sparks a really important dialogue within these communities as well. One of the things you're going to do is educate people about things that they did not know about. And let's start with that first film, a movie that was made in 1910, Gene the Vitagraph Dog. What's the story here? Well, Gene the Vitagraph Dog was actually a collie who was born in Eastport, Maine. And she went on to make 25 short films uh, with, for the Vitagraph Company. And this is the first film that was ever made in Maine in 1910. So for a long time, the, it was thought that the print was lost forever until a nitrate print uh, was discovered in the New Zealand Film Archive, and then it was repatriated, brought back to the US, restored by the Library of Congress, and now we've commissioned a new score for the film. So this 13-minute short will actually travel to almost 20 venues throughout the festival, giving people a chance to see this film in Maine for probably the first time in 110 years. You obviously want as many people as possible to come see these films. What do you hope they'll take away from the experience? I hope they look at uh, their state and take pride in it in a new way after seeing all of the stories that people have told about it, especially those people from away because they're not Mainers and they have a different experience. And I think that's, it, I feel a lot of pride having uh, you know worked on this program and seen all of the different voices that uh, really contribute to a rich cultural picture of our state.
And the main in the movie series runs from March 5th to the 15th. 35 films are being shown in 17 different towns and cities all over the state. That series is being presented by the Maine Film Center and 19 other arts and education organizations. There are way too many listings for us to tell you about, but you can find all the information you need about the screenings in the 207 section of our website. That's newcentermaine.com slash 207. And we're not done with